So hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest uh, Joe Dell webinar today on the 1st of May, uh, Labor Day um, 2023. Uh, we are coming live from uh, the UK and from Norway. So Eirik from CuriPod is going to talk to us this evening about the fantastic AI tool CuriPod, uh, which can literally create a presentation for you, including interactive elements in a matter of seconds. But before we get into that, as there's been such a, a lot of interest recently about AI, um, and in particular this webinar, we've had many, many people uh, sign up um, and we've got many, many people watching live as we speak. Um, the recording is going to be made available on my uh, YouTube channel, so no doubt that will get lots of views as well. I thought I would just quickly mention uh, before we start a, a webinar series which I put together. It's been hours and hours of hard work and research on how we can get the most out of uh, ChatGPT, which you may have heard of recently. And it's particularly focusing on uh, the resource creation side of ChatGPT. In other words, how you can save time as a language teacher producing uh, resources more efficiently and more quickly. So what I've done is I put together a four-part webinar series starting on the 4th of May. So that's Thursday uh, this week. Uh, there's one session on the 4th of May, one on the 11th, one on the 16th, and one on the 25th. And I'm running each session three times in the same day, one at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning UK time, one at 7 o'clock in the morning UK time, sorry, 7 o'clock in the evening UK time, and one at 9.30 uh, in the evening UK time. So the idea behind that is to try to cater for different time zones. So if you're in Australia, for example, you would go for the 10 a.m. in the morning. If you're from the UK and for, or from Europe, you would go for the uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And if you're from the States, as we have many people watching live from the States right now, then that would be um, 9.30 in the evening. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of the, uh, of the content, um, as I said, there are uh, four sessions. Uh, the first session is looking at using ChatGPT for efficient language resource creation, and it goes through some of the ideas here. We then look at some more advanced ideas and um, how you can create certain prompts for saving time when creating a form of assessment uh, activities using things like quizzes and Quizlet and Blookit and so on and so forth, as well as how to create flippity activities much, much more quickly by using uh, prompts in ChatGPT. In the third session, we're looking at um, how you can use, again, more advanced ideas around uh, mind mapping and using Google Mind Maps and uh, Google Earth and uh, creating your own uh, mind map for planning a trip abroad, uh, as well as some uh, third party uh, Chrome extensions as well. And in the last session, we'll be looking at a range of uh, AI tools, including uh, CuriPod um, as well. And I'll be going through and showing you different ways in which these can be used uh, particularly in languages. This has been a very popular webinar series. I've had lots and lots of people signing up um, for this, which has been absolutely fantastic, but there's, there is room for more. Um, it's, as you can see here, 44 pounds, so 40 pounds plus um, Eventbrite booking fees per webinar. But if you um, uh, pay 120 or 130 something with the booking fees, then you get all four. So in other words, you get uh, three, uh, you get um, all four, I mean, for the price, for the price of three. So if you are watching the recording right now and you'd like to get the link, then oh, what I'm going to do that, there's the QR code. Feel free to scan the QR code. And for those people watching live right now, I will copy the link and I will put it straight in the chat. I'll also put my YouTube channel in the chat in a minute um, as well. So when you click on that link to get the time zone that suits you, you just go here and you click on the blue uh, here link for um, Australasia, Asia and Australasia, and you click the one here for uh, the US. Um, so there we are, that's how it works. So without further ado, thank you as well to Eric for giving me the opportunity to plug the webinar series. I'd love to see lots of people uh, coming along to that, even more people sign up. So I'm now going to uh, stop sharing my screen and hand over to Eric, who's gonna tell us all about CuriPod and how it can help uh, language teachers in particular to create presentations more quickly and easily and involve interactive elements. I cannot wait to get started. I'm so excited. I'm a real fanboy. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand you over to Eric. Over to you, Eric. Hello, everyone. So what I'll do today is I'll start with giving just a brief introduction to CuriPod. Uh, and then I'll take in some questions. Uh, so I have something to schedule around because I've I don't like to plan my talks that well. I like you to be the one that control what we do. So I will ask you a few questions. And when I get the answer, we will go up from that. So everything we do today is going to be live. 
So that's really exciting. Um, to give you kind of my brief background before you, we start is, I think most of you have been inside a classroom. This was me. Um, I was born with an inbuilt Hermione reflex. That means that if you as a teacher ask a question, my hand goes like this. And then I start thinking, hmm, do I know the answer? And, and that's kind of where I came from. And after school, I worked as an educator, both in Norway, and then I moved to Mozambique, where I worked as an educator. And after that, I went back to Norway, started studying economics, of all things. And at my university, I met a guy called Jens. Spoiler alert, he is now my co-founder. Um, we started working together a lot. Um, I'm a morning person, which means that I, I would wake him up at seven and I would make him some food and we would start working. And at 3 p.m. when I want to go home and watch Netflix, he had just woken up and we continued to work. And we worked together like this for two and a half years. And after working with him for those years, uh, he suddenly told me that he had dropped out of high school. And that's kind of when Curipod started because I got really curious into why did he drop out? Because he is the smartest person I've met. So that's, that's kind of where it all started. And, and being this kid, I didn't have many dropouts in my social circle. And for Jens, it was all about motivation. And since then, that's been the goal of Curipod is to make a tool that makes it really motivating to participate. I've been reflecting so much after I left kind of school on how much my hand affected the rest of the class. Every time I raise my hand, someone might think, hmm, there is no point, Eric will get to answer. Some might think, uh, hmm, there is no point, because even though if I get to answer the question, Eric will get to answer it afterwards, and I will just be embarrassed. So there is so much social dynamics going on, and this is extremely important in the language classroom for me, because in the language class, but when you learn a language, you really need to speak it. Um, so if we have problems with, part, like, if we don't have high participation in a language class, it's really hard to make the students learn. So that's going to be my one big goal of this session is to show you how we can use AI and CurePod and AI inside CurePod to create that engagement, to allow students to participate, to practice. I learned this the hard way. I, I had Spanish in school and I'm okay in reading Spanish now. Now, not, not good at speaking it. Uh, but I didn't learn too much. Um, I didn't get to practice it enough. I didn't dare to participate that much. But then I moved to Mozambique and then I didn't have a choice because they didn't speak much English. So I had to learn Portuguese and then my, my Spanish came up quite handy learning Portuguese, but I have experienced firsthand how, how important it is to, uh, to practice languages. So, that's my goal, to, to show you how you can use Curapod to, to get high participation and to use AI to create some awesome language classes. So I think I'll start off just with doing a Curapod with you. So now I actually, you prepare yourself because I want you to join in here. And so this is my welcome. And basically what I'll do now is I'll drop down the lobby and I'll go and share this join link to the chat. So if everyone can join in here, you can either just press the link I uh, put in the um, uh, chat, or you can go to curie.live. Okay, we have a lot of people coming in. Help for Lusk. So Lusk is actually the cat of one of our uh, main programmers. Uh, both of our Two out of three of our programmers, they love cats. So they try to put in their cat's name wherever they can in CurryPod. Fun fact. So now we're in the lobby, seeing you all join in. That's awesome. And you can all just, this is also a nice thing to know about CurryPod. Even if I close this lobby, you will still have the option to join in. So um, I can share the link again in case someone got in later let us see let's see if i'm able to there it's the chat awesome and as you see in curapod you all have to uh, put in your real names but then when i show the big screen you just see each other's nicknames if i now go here 
and open the moderation tool, we can all see the real names. And that's for the teacher. So this is great. So basically, the first thing I want to show you is a promotion code. I will show you this at the end as well. But with the promotion code Joe, you get, uh, I think it's 40% of uh, the annual license to Curapon. So it's if you want to, if you like Curapon and you want a premium subscription later on, you can use Joe to save a lot of money. Um, so note that down this code, and I will go back to it later on. And so basically, what I want to start with is just a basic question: What do you want to learn today? Uh, and here you can type in anything you want. So I just want to know why you're here. Uh, what you hope that you're left with when we're finished with this session. So I'll give you one and a half minutes and I start it now. This was me, by the way. You see already there's a lot of answers coming in and this is like, I will show you all the AI in Curapod afterwards, but this is a lot of the essence of Curapod is making activities that makes it really easy to participate. Um, I see a lot of people write in the chat as well. Make sure to write in the Curapod. Uh, so you see the join link up here. Join at curie.live 5881. This is great. And you can see here, I'm, I'm the teacher. I can add more time to the activities. And there we are done. And I will let you vote for the answers I will focus on. But just as you know, if I were afraid of a lot of inappropriate stuff popping up now, I could also open the moderation tool and I can go through all the questions and kind of look through them. This is a great tool for teacher in the classroom. I'm not that afraid of that at the moment, so I'll just start the voting round. So if you look on your screens now and your Curapod screens, you will be able to vote for the questions you want me to answer. That's just because it's around 40, 50 questions in there. So I want to see what you think is the most important ones to answer. And this is also a part where the students really feel really engaged because they get the saying into what's important in the classroom. Um, so this is, um, uh, this is an activity I like a lot. And for example, in language learning, you could have used this for write a sentence about yourself in French uh, and have everyone write in and for example, vote for the most creative one or vote for the one with uh, the most interesting use of verbs. There's a lot of ways to kind of use this voting system to, to make it motivating to participate. This helps me a lot planning the rest of our session. We have a background music as well. That's really great to use in the classroom. Um, my opinion is when you do it as a webinar or you have someone joining in as you do kind of from different computers, it's, it makes it a bit harder for me to talk. So that's why I've turned the music up down here. Okay, I'm super excited because I haven't used the moderation tools, so I haven't looked through your questions. How can it support educators in the classroom? That is great. I would like to see ideas how to use Curapod in the classroom so that train educators. I have a lot of examples. That's great. I want to learn how to use AI, how to make my lessons more interactive. That's great. We've already started. This is a really easy way of using Curapod to make interactive lessons. The features most effectively, I will definitely come back to this one. Language classroom, AI, which software can be used, how to use AI. 
some useful tips on how to use ChatGPT. I will try to get into this as well. English classroom, let's cure a pod. Oh, this is great. So I have a lot to go through here. Awesome. Um, so I have two or three more activities. Uh, the next one here is, um, have you tried any new AI tools this year? Oh, let's do this one first. What do you teach? So this is a word cloud. You all get one minute to write what you teach. I just want to see what, who's in here? Are you Spanish teachers, French teachers? Are you math teachers that just came into language seminar wanting to learn something about AI? That's also super cool. And I will post the join link as well if someone came in late. So if you want to join in the Curie pod, you just go here and you can participate. There are so many answers coming in. This is great. Okay, let's see. French, Spanish, English. Oh, okay, English. Cool. Language, Mandarin, French, Spanish. This is great. Cool. So many different language teachers here. So I have two more questions. Those are polls. So the first one is, have you tried any new AI tools this year? So yes or no, Paul. Eleven no's, twenty-three yes. That's nice. Then we know what we're working with. And finally, have you tried CuriePod? That's just also so I have some data to go out of. Twenty-eight no's, six yes. That's great. Then we know what to work with. So then I'll make sure to show you some curipod here as well. Okay, this is great. So I'll stop my sharing just for a while and I'll come back to it. Um, but basically, uh, oh, cool question by the way in chat. What does curipod stand for, if anything? Curipod comes from curiosity. That's that's what we're working with. Uh, we really try to make a tool where it's really easy to to exp to be curious, to ask questions. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just give you a brief introduction to AI uh, and take a look at kind of some different tools before I dive into CuriePod. Um, and what is AI? And I will not answer this kind of, there is a lot of ways to answer this question. Uh, but artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence. It's it's technology trying to mimic human intelligence. Um, but it's built by machines that they're learning. And artificial intelligence have, have been around for a long time. Uh, it's it's what we kind of built, like a lot of the algorithms that work in social media and all over like words, grammar co correction, like autocorrect, everything like this are built of AI system. But the big shock most of us probably got in, in November, or December, uh, January with ChatGPT, that's generative AI. And that is AI where we as users can create content. It could be creating text with text. It can be create images with text. It can be, be create text based on images but we generate content and that is extremely powerful. 
Um, and that's kind of the, the background for this talk is that kind of content creation part. Um, AI is learning, so it's, um, they train it on big data sets. So it will never kind of, it, everything is based on things that are out there. Uh, but a really important, I like to quote this one, and, and this is from uh, SKLR, indeed, AI engineer. He, he likes to say that AI, it's like the world's smartest five-year-old. Uh, and what does I mean? What do I mean with that? Well, I mean that um, it knows everything, right? It knows everything that has been trained on on the internet. It 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 can know a lot of text. Um, the large language models we see out there, they're not made to know facts, but they know a lot of facts. But why, why does they call it the world's smartest five-year-old? Well, because everything it knows, it will tell you with the utmost confidence. That means, like, if, if you have, if you had, if you ever have had a five-year-old at home, and you come home and he says, uh, "Simon's dad can fly," and you say, "No," and he says, "Yes, Simon told me so." That's the truth. That that's kind of like I think that's an easy way of understanding AI because it doesn't understand the concept of uh, of falsehood. Um, if it knows something, it's true. So that's where we should be kind of a bit skeptical of AI, or at least be wary, is that we need to treat facts from AI uh, in one way. But another part of AI is the creativity part. And that, that's a, a really kind of, that's where it's really powerful, and especially with, with kind of uh, language learning. So what I'll do now is I'll do a chat GPT experiment with you. Uh, I've not prepared this any particular. So let's see what it creates. So I'll go out of my curry pot here. Oh, I have a toolbar up here that's blocking me. Let's move that. And let's go into ChatGPT. Um, so now I'm in ChatGPT. Uh, for those of you who haven't used it, this is one of the, this was the kind of the big breakthrough model. And uh, here I am the free version. You can have a premium version as well. That means that you, you never get any downtime and stuff like this. But this is basically an AI model you can chat with. And let's try to use it for some language learning. You, of course, have you have some different examples I would like to try for, with you. And, and first of all, I want going to try something you can kind of try when you prepare classes. Let's say um, you want your students to practice reading. Uh, I want my students to practice reading Spanish. And I identify AR verbs. Create a text with uh, 300 characters they can use to circle, create a, a circle Spanish AR verbs. Then we wait a bit. And it starts creating it. And of course, you can upgrade to the premium version. That's a bit faster. Uh, it's also a bit better on facts. I, I wanted to use the free version for this kind of trial because I want to show you what you can kind of get for free here. I will also try to share my slides afterwards. Let's see, there's a question about that. And it creates the text here. 
but this is where ChatGPT becomes really powerful. I'll stop this one now. You, you see the point. Uh, because let's say I know I have a student that is extremely interested in football. And I want to give him a personalized text to read. That's great. Can you create another one focusing um, focusing on or for let's say swimming? That's a I know there's a lot of Spanish tests out there about uh, football. Uh, we've got a comment in the chat, um, Eirik, which is uh, Julie saying, um, so even the facts may be wrong. Will the Spanish be reliably correct? Yes. Well, I would uh, say, having played around with this a lot, certainly in French, is that you always, always have to check um, the output that um, ChatGPT produces because there may be some grammatical yeah. mistakes, for example. Um, so always, always check. So I think it's it's uh, like your first draft, as it were, but I wouldn't just copy and paste it as it is. I would not copy and paste it. I, I would yeah. go through it myself. Uh, I found spelling mistakes in English as well. And the GPT-4 model is a lot better, but that's the reason why I also use these examples is that um, even though it might be spelling mistakes, it is a lot better when it comes to language than it is when it kind of compared to facts. So as language learners, you're in, or language teachers, you're in an ideal position to test out AI because it's, um, the large language models are basically made for language. Um, so yeah, I would definitely double check it or I would also, I myself subscribe to premium just because I think it's an incredibly powerful tool for $20 a month. Uh, but it gives me the freedom to basically create text about anything you want on the focus I want. Let's say I want them to use, I remember I struggled so much with subjuntivo in Spanish. Uh, you can make it narrow down on that. Um, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, this is an example of how you can use it to, uh, to kind of personalize text. You could of course also said, this is great. I like to be nice when I speak to it. I don't know why. It's just a habit I've been into. Is uh, but could you increase the difficulty level of the language, or maybe uh, could you? I need to remove this one because I can't see. It. Or but could you use simpler? language maybe you have someone that needs a more, bit easier text so i'll stop it there but this is an example of how you can kind of use chat gpt to create personalized learning experience i'll use you i'll show you one more use case and and that is using chat gpt uh to uh, to act as a character. And that's one of my favorite uh, tools because you can basically um, you can basically give the students the students can practice themselves, for example. So an easy way is to go, for example, and say, you are a Spanish tutor. My level is a one. I want you to ask me questions, uh, ask me easy questions about my life in Spanish. I will answer in Spanish and you will correct me. And then it's you see here, it didn't understand what I mean. That's okay. Then I just go stop. Uh, sorry. Again, I see. I have a I have a habit of being polite. You might have you have misunderstood. I want you to ask the questions as my tutor. 
but I will answer that. Then I create some questions and then como te llamas? Me llamo Eric. And then you can basically have a conversation here. Uh, so this is a really great tool of, to kind of give them that possibility to practice. And you could of course do this even more kind of advanced if you want to create a lot of context around it. You could, for example, ask ChatGPT to act as a journalist interviewing them. That kind of brings kind of a, a role-playing aspect into it, which is really interesting. Um, so this is one way of using ChatGPT. Um, let's see if there's any questions here. You can always make it simpler. You can always kind of try it out. But, but what I would really recommend is when it comes to ChatGPT, to sit down and just play a bit with it yourself. And again, I think it's really important to notice what what kind of Joe said that we should we should be we should be really mindful of kind of fact mistakes. We should be mindful of spelling mistakes. But it's a really neat way of getting some inspiration and create content in a faster way that we've done before. Um, so that's super powerful. I want to. And I'm going to move on to CurePod soon, but I think this is also a great time to just talk a little bit around kind of important discussions to have with yourself when you use AI. And the first one I want to point out is AI and facts. And that's basically what we've been discussing is that the AI models we, uh, we've seen today, they are, um, they're quite like they're quite good in facts and they're, they're better than a lot of people but there still might be fact mistakes and it doesn't know when it's unsure so double check facts that's always a good idea the other part is uh, then you can try using it for stuff like creativity um oh i see someone has posted the voice extension for chrome that's really fun to play around with i, I really do recommend that one um the other part is bias. And that's, I think, really important to be aware of is that AI is trained on the internet. So it might be that if you ask ChatGPT to explain what creates a great CEO, it might think that they have to be a 50 year old white male because that's statistically, a lot of the great CEOs are in that demographic group. Uh, so, it doesn't necessarily understand bias that much. A really interesting study shows that it's a lot more, like it's a lot more accurate if you actually ask it to double check. So usually when I work with AI and facts, I, I like to check, ask it, could you double check yourself? Uh, the other is kind of when to use it. And I really recommend starting out with the creative part, creating text, creating ideas, just uh, testing it out like, I, I struggle with subjuntivo. If you have a student that struggled with subjuntivo, say, go to ChatGPT and say, I, I have a student that struggled with learning subjuntivo. Can you give me five different ways of explaining it? Because that's where AI has its power. It, it's so great at creating multiple answers of this, like multiple variants. So that's really powerful. And I think, I think we will be better than language uh, when we use this technology. And so that's it for um, kind of using chat GPT, using all of this. Um, then I think I'll move on to CuriPod. Uh, if someone have any questions, you can write them in the, in the chat here now. Uh, I'll wait a minute or two just to see if there's anyone in there. And then I'll just move on to some introduction to CuriPod. What is it? Um, so we've got a quick question here, Eirik, if that's okay. Yeah, go some... ahead. Uh, how would you recommend motivating weaker students uh, by using AI in a language classroom? Do you think that, well, I, I won't put words into your mouth. What, what do you think? How would you motivate weaker students? Um, with the use I of think AI? it's, um, I think there's a two part answer to that question. So first of all, I think as educators, we of course need to be very with kind of what kinds of tools we're pushing on students, right? Because ChatGPT, for example, has a lot of amazing qualities, 
but there's also always an issue when it comes to data privacy. I know ChatGPT just released a function so you can turn off that it trains any data on your personal, uh, trains anything on your personal data. So just, I, I, want, to, I want to stress that, that the advice I give is, given that you, you feel that you can uh, promote these tools to your students, uh, and that should be a discussion that should be held in every school, right? Uh, and, and given that, I would give two big advance advices when you work with the weaker students. And one is just have, start with having fun with AI, right? Uh, I am a big geek. I love Harry Potter. I love Lord of the Rings. The first thing I did with ChatGPT was I went into ChatGPT and I wrote, uh, create a text-based adventure game where I am an 11 year old student just starting Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I had fun for hours. Uh, it, it gave me a fantastic scenario and it said, it basically described what happened. I write in what's happened back and kind of, I start having a lot of fun with it. And when you start having fun with it, then you can start from learning for it because then you can basically, if you find a use case like that, your students think is a lot of fun, then you can move on to, okay, then maybe ask it to do all this in French or German. Then you suddenly are really motivated to learn in there. Uh, another part is showing them how this can save them a lot of time, right? For example, um, if, if you take a class to learn Spanish, you don't get anywhere if you just ask ChatGPT to, uh, to uh, write your text for you. But my problem learning Spanish was that none of my parents spoke Spanish. That means if I wrote a text, I have to deliver it to my teacher. The teacher spends a week going over it. I get it back. And, and let's be honest, we, we all know it. Students, they don't look at feedback if it's not instant. So the great thing with ChatGPT is that everyone basically has a great Spanish tutor at home. So they can write their text and they can put it into uh, to, to ChatGPT and get feedback on it. And that's the kind of use cases I would like to promote because that's the use cases that will take them far in life as well. That's kind of learning to utilize these powers. Uh, so that's kind of my two-part answer. Let me know I'm answer. just going to turn my video on just quickly, just to, just to be very clear as well. I absolutely hear what you're saying, but we have to also say that um, to uh, register for an account, you have to be 13 or above yes. and have parental permission or 18 above and not have to have parental permission. And when you create an account, you have to put a mobile phone number in. So um, I think we have to be very careful if we are in this webinar in general, uh, suggesting that students should sign up for ChatGPT. I don't. And that's that's my point there. That I think yeah. this is kind of. Um, I want to make sure that this webinar is relevant for a long time because I know there will come a lot more kind of like, for example, in Europe we have a really strict GDPR uh, compliance. I'm from Norway, so what we see a lot of the Norwegian schools are starting on is they're buying enterprise APIs from ChatGPT and then sets up their own environment that is basically a GDPR compliant uh, ChatGPT bot for Norwegian students. So again, let me, let me stress that, that kind of the advice here is how I would utilize AI given that we can do it. Uh, because I want this webinar to kind of be, that's, that's the interesting thing with AI is that it changes from week to week right now. <laughs> yeah, tell so me. The, like the tools we will look at in like, hello everyone watching two months uh, forward in June or something. Uh, the reality will be different then. So that's kind of the two parts. One is kind of what's the possibilities of AI, and the other one is the real discussion of kind of what's what's possible today, right? Yeah, and I think that's really interesting. I, I think absolutely, I, I echo what you say about how it can be used as a personal language assistant, but I think we have to be careful on on what we are saying or what could be construed by what we're saying so i think that yeah it definitely has a very powerful um potential of being able to support students particularly the independent ones who are very keen and want that extra support as you said your parents didn't have spanish so um you would have i'm sure loved to be uh using ai in order to push yourself forward and make yourself more uh autonomous but i just think we have to be yeah, mindful totally of the fact agree. that you have to be a, yeah, over 13 have permission and put a mobile phone number in but in the example you're saying 
if uh, let's say the Norwegian government or the Nor Norwegian educational service are going to take the the AI and make their own propriety version, as it were, then that's great. And I'd I'd love to see more questions in the chat about this as well. That'd be great. Yeah, and also like I, I've spent a lot of my life digging into GDPR. So any questions about that as well? It's super. Uh, I know just in relation to the exams. I know we've talked about you can put in the CEFR level so you can say you know create a text at a1 level yeah that's, that's, that's a topic we just had the question from uh, elise uh, which is can ChatGPT be used to practice for the uh, toefl t-o-e-f-l uh, exam or the ielts exam um i presume it can be or if it doesn't recognize it directly if you train it to uh, understand I, I can i have used quite a lot of time testing chat gpt towards kind of knowing different standards and my experience is that gpt4 is really good at it i would not use gpt3 for it okay uh, then i would do as you suggest train your chat kind of give the give the chat kind of input this is good this is bad give it something to practice on but gpt4 tends to be quite good i haven't tested with the total standards but uh that's yeah GPT-4 tends to be better than GPT-3 on this. Fantastic. So if people don't know, you can actually um, get it to create a rubric or give it your, the rubric that you're using and then get it to mark uh, students' work. Obviously, if you were to do that, you'd have to make sure that there wasn't any personal information in the students' work. Yeah, but and that's that's also one correct. of the issues that EU will be regulating a bit more heavily. And that's also why I kind of uh, talk a lot about the creativity part is that I know EU now pushes some new regulation when it comes to using it as reviewing uh, students' work. And that, I think, is probably a really good thing, right? Because it's it's a difference between using it as an assistant and making it kind of uh, determine the outcome on people's test. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in the chat, uh, so uh, the comment uh, from Elise is, so I have to either purchase ChatGPT4 or train it beforehand. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we're all discovering, we're all working out how to do this sort of thing, really. But, but, uh, and again, uh, let, let's stress uh, that this will change every month at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, if you want to use it with handwritten work, you would have to go through a handwritten, there is a lot of AIs focusing on uh, transcribing handwritten to, to personal notes. But again, kind of then it's really important, as Joe said, also one thing is kind of the personal data when the students use tools like this, but another really important part is student data. If you upload it to chat GPT, right? You, you make sure there is no personal information. Yeah. What I want to do now is I want to go into Curapod and show you some of the magic because what we've been trying to do, now you've seen kind of the world of opportunities out there. And what we've been trying to do in Curapod is to just make it really easy to utilize AI. We try to take all of these things, like all of the creative part I've been talking about and wrap it for you. All the discussions around um kind of how to use it best wrap that for you so just you create an ai tool that makes it really easy to teach so you all have seen me start out with curapod but what i want to do now is show you how i, I create some curapods so i go to curapod.com and i already sign up so i go to my lessons and then I can press create lesson. And here I can either upload my own presentations or I can start out with AI. So let's say uh, I want to see Frank. I want a lesson about Spanish, um, Spanish words, for example. Learning goal, practicing Spanish vocabulary. And I'll set it to fifth grade, that's good, and do magic. So what this one does now is that it creates a lesson about Spanish words. And here you go. So this is an interactive slide deck. What do I mean with an interactive slide deck? I mean that if you press present, you can have all your students join in as you all did in the beginning of this lesson. So the first activity it created here, it's a word cloud. Um, 
Name one Spanish word you know. Created some fact slides. Some discussion questions. I'd like to throw in a brain break because those are important. Mini project. So this is basically something you can create for yourself. And what's really powerful with Curapult is these mini generators. So let's say you know you want to start your lesson out with a check-in, you just go check-in. Draw something, draw or write something that makes you smile. Okay, there I have my check-in for the beginning. Okay, maybe I didn't like that background. I'll just go down here and I'll add another color or maybe I'll find the picture of a smile. Those balloons were awesome. You can change the colors here as well. Um, we've just been asked about the, the password. Could you share the password with us again, uh, Eric? Oh, yeah, the code. Sorry, it's just because um, Elise was uh, kicked out. Of oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, no, no, no. Okay, the joint code for Curapod. Uh, it's not active. Uh, okay. I'm now in the creator. That's a good question. Now I'm in the creator creating a presentation. I'm you Saturday evening, unfortunately. That's kind of who I am right now. Creating my lesson. Um, Thanks for, let, for clarifying. That's great. Yeah. Uh, or let's say you want to add some poll questions. Spanish verbs. What's the infinitive form of Spanish verb? Hablar. Spanish verb means to read. Hablar means what in English? So here I got my poll questions. And as you see here, kind of what Curipod does is that we combine two things. We're an interactive presentation tool. You all participated in the interactive presentation tool, but we make it really easy to create content because we allow you to use AI to create this content. I only told it I wanted Spanish verb polls for fifth grade, but it created uh, the slides for me here. Um, I think the tool I really want to show you now is personalized feedback. It's our most powerful tool, probably. So I can either AI generate it or create it from scratch. So let's go uh, personalized feedback, Spanish verbs. Um, okay, this was good. I want to, uh, I, I'd like to use this as an inspiration, but I want to make it a bit simpler. So I'll rather say, write a sentence using the verb hablar. Okay, and then I'll go set it to a writing task and answer expectation is use correct verb conjugations. And now I actually want to test this live with you all. So I'll give you one and a half minute and it's really okay to not know Spanish, but let's try it out. This is always exciting to try out live. So I want you all to join in with me here. So I'll again, I'll share the join code in the chat here. So you can all join in now. I'll set it to totally anonymous, which means that there is nothing to be afraid of. Uh, while that's happening, uh, Eric, we've had a question from Dario. Go ahead. Will you be Will you be introducing grade levels based uh, on the UK uh, grade levels uh, system, uh, e.g., Year Seven and other international models? Yes, we are expanding it all the time, and I would also recommend to try. Like it works quite well just using the US levels as well, uh, because the most important work of it is to cater to the kind of age group we're working with because the standards you mostly set in the learning objectives. That's great, thank you. No, of course. And you can all continue to join in now. I really recommend you to join in because this will be fun. Uh, your challenge is write a sentence using the verb hablar. And I'll go start.
Got a lot of answers coming in now. This is great. See, there are more people joining, so I'll let it run out. So we still have one minute left to write your sentence using the verb hablar. And I'll share the link again in case there's anyone waiting out. Join. And this is kind of my most important part with Curapod is usually if I ask students can anyone say a sentence with the word verb hablar? I get one or two answers. With Curapod, I've already gotten answers from almost 90% of you. So that's kind of, that's the big goal of Curapod is to make sure that everyone are able to participate. Okay, you've all answered. So what I'll do now is I'll open the moderation tool. Here I can see all the answers. This is the teacher tool. And now I can press generate feedback. So it creates feedback for everyone. If I wasn't live now, I would use read it a bit deeper. I can go in and edit it. I can retry them. And then when I feel like it's all good, I can press give feedback. And now you will see you all get feedback on your answers. And here you can see, <laughs> you don't have life, I know. This is great. So here you saw a live demonstration of the feedback tool, and this works for all languages uh, and basically everything else as well. So you can't you can't say use it to um, create explain Newton's first law. So what I'll do now is um, I'll do another cure pod and basically. Or basically, I think I'll stop a bit there and just see: Are there any other questions? I was just going to say, can I just can I just ask about that feedback? I yeah, I've just written in the chat. That is awesome. I've never seen anything like that before. Is that um, does it is it the teacher that has access to that and shows it to the students, or can the students see that individually? No, you or you you touch on our base AI principle, uh, and that is that in CurePod. AI is teacher controlled, which means that the students can't themselves access AI. Uh, which means that what we saw now was me as a teacher getting all your responses, looking through them, and then sending them out to you. So at the end of the session, you all get access to your particular feedback. The teacher has everything, but kind of everything goes through the teacher. So when you were showing us examples of the feedback that was given, that is you as the teacher choosing to give feedback yeah. uh, or, or, or show the feedback that the, that the AI has generated. Is that yes. right? Yes. The students themselves only see their own feedback. Amazing. We have a really good question from Dario, which is how can you adjust the pr uh, parameters of the feedback? Oh, that is accuracy, question. recovery, range, grammar, et cetera. That's a great question. Oh. So do you see my screen again? So basically, I can create another one here, um, a personalized feedback, and you set the expectations here. So I'll, usually when I do for language, I set it to write thing and then write a sentence using the verb hablar. And then you could, for example, say uh, use for uh, Vocabulary expected on a Spanish B2 level, for example. That's so this answer expectation allows you to kind of set set the parameters around your question. But uh, you could be more specific if you wanted to there, if you wanted to be specific about feedback about the grammar or the accuracy or what have you. 
Yes, as specific as you want. You could also say only give feedback on verb conjugations, for example. Okay, uh, Brian's made a really important point as well. So he said the feedback I received was not correct. For example, yes. it told me to work on conjugation, but the suggested changes were spelling and accent changes. This just emphasizes the uh, the need to review the feedback. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. I think that's what we've said already, really. But thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's that's amazing that you point that out because that's I, I we're in a live seminar now, so I'll just push for feedback. But you should always be review, you, kind of reviewing this stuff, and that's that's kind of what what we always want to stress is that AI is it's in my opinion never uh, at least thousands of year away from replacing any teachers um it's a support tool it's a startup tool right you you create some feedback you look through it it's the same thing when you create a text with ai you uh you create three texts on different kind of levels like one about football one about swimming and then you read through them right it's faster than doing it on your own but it's it's never going to replace teachers. No, you need to tweak the the input, uh, the output yes. that it produces, and make it fit um, the needs of your own students. But I, I, I love the, I love that feedback option. I've never seen anything like that before uh, so far. That's uh, amazing. But, uh, if you want to yeah. take it further, um, and and that also kind of caters to Brian Brian's point here, and this is this is my favorite use case of it, and that this is how I promote using it is first use it as I did now. Uh, don't necessarily look through it as I did now. Send it out, ask the students to copy it over and uh, review the feedback. That's a really great task for the student because then you would basically ask all the students to write uh, a text where they comment on the feedback. Is this good feedback? Is this bad feedback? And that's what you look through because one, you save yourself the time of actually kind of looking over that particular feedback live and the students really get a great learning experience because they like there is no better feeling than finding mistakes, right? That's we everyone we everyone like everyone loves that. You find some small like detail someone's missed, and and that's really like I see when teachers use it that way. The students are incredibly motivated to learn because they're like, oh, I'm going to beat the AI, and and I really like that because like one it teaches them that AI is not factually correct. Like it teaches them that they are probably smarter than AI. And that's a really nice thing to know. Two, it makes them really look through kind of their feedback because like we all, we all have experienced that it isn't always that students look through their feedback that detailed. So it really makes them look through it because they know like there isn't, if you look through, this is, I'm rambling now because I think this is super interesting is that if you work a lot with students, you usually see that they're really not happy about going through feedback. And, and why is that? Because they know it's correct, right? Because the teacher is the lawmaker. So what the teacher tells them is the truth, or it's at least the truth that they're held accountable to on their tests, which means that there are no point arguing with the teacher. And that's a really cool thing when you as a teacher use AI, is that then there is a point arguing with you. And then you have a motivation to actually look through and read your feedback. And then you either accept it, okay, this was really good, it, it was correct, or hmm, this was a mistake. I was I, I made all my conjugation correctly. It's supposed to be hablo. Uh, and it, it pointed out a wrong mistake. So that's my favorite use case of AI. And it's it basically covers up everything. You get the um, kind of bias use, you get the be aware of, of mistakes and you get kind of student motivation. Yeah, so we, we are recognizing the fact that it won't always produce um, an absolutely correct uh, piece of feedback or something which which is maybe factual. It may um, be, you know, sort of lie confidently like a five-year-old. I love that analogy. That's brilliant. But we can use it as a starting point and then uh, look at it um, acutely and work out whether the feedback that's been given is uh, accurate or not i think that's that's fantastic and i can see that in the chat as well um oh, that's a Dario good saying about how yeah this is giving him food for thought which is just great nice in so fact, let's read out um Dario's comment just saying but you would get a lot of uk teachers on board if you could demonstrate how it would mark and generate feedback on gcse style writing questions eg 90 
uh, word uh, text for foundation, 150 words for hire, and it being marked against the parameters that examiners use to mark a real exam. Maybe food for thought. I'm sure you could train train up to oh, do. You, actually, you don't actually need to train it as well. You can just so go in here. So I, I don't want to uh, pretend that I'm. I know all different educational systems, but I've seen, like I've tested it with a lot of different state standards in the US and it's great. So you could go in here and you could uh, basically set your writing question. So what you do is you go through previous exams and you find a writing question. I, I can only kind of look to Norway for example, but write a paragraph or uh, arguing for free school meals and then you could either test it out with um so what i would do is i would fetch the rubric from the gcc style writing and put it in here yeah. uh, the more rubric you put in kind of the, the more it has to follow and when you put that rubric in and you could actually create that rubric probably by getting chat GPT-4 and have it create a rubric, or you can have it from your own, put it in here, and then you basically have it. It's a really neat tool for practicing kind of writing. Um, especially because as you all know, like giving, giving feedback to writing takes a lot of time. I, I still recommend doing exercises when they're right and you go through and read it all by yourself, right? Because you learn a lot, but to get kind of a lot of practice in, it's a really nice way of going, giving feedback. So I would I would log on to CurePod and just try that out at once if I had this as an issue. Awesome. And is it possible to share uh, CurePod uh, presentations with other teachers? Is that possible? Like a um, Okay, uh, first, uh, yes, you can share it like, so I can show how to share it. Okay. Um, uh, that, uh, while you're doing that, Dara's got a follow-up question. But how would yeah. you put the rubric on there? Rubrics have at least two different parameters: content and use of language and accuracy, with four or five grade uh, bands in each. Sorry, I'm used to this. I mean, my my answer to that was, um, I mean, I don't know if you if you know um, Dario, but you can put in tables into or, or ChatGPT can generate tables. I don't know if that's true of CuriePod, but it can I, I would understand do tables different... content. I would try, so first let me answer that question. I would try two different things. I would try to just paste it in here, but I will also just try to take the parameters you have, like in the format you have them, paste them into chat GPT and ask it to summarize these parameters as a written text to be used as an answer expectation to a question. Yeah. And that's, now you're basically, now we're, I, I'm an AI geek and, and now we're going deep into kind of the real, <laughs> powers of AI is that you can do stuff like this. You can have like, hmm, I have this big table here and I want to get it into this answer expectation and I'm, I'm not sure how to do that. ChatGPT is usually a good place to start with that. Yeah, or, or um, ask ChatGPT how to do that, how to take um, the contents from a table and put it into text form. That's what I do. Yes. I just ask ChatGPT, how do I do this? And it will tell me. I, I use it with bullet points all the time, right? I have five bullet points from a meeting and then I need to produce a paragraph just summarizing the meeting, or create a paragraph summarizing these bullet points. Or the other way around, I have this paragraph, create some bullet points. I was going to say, and then someone receives that paragraph and then asks ChatGPT to turn it into bullet points. And that's actually a really interesting discussion because I hear some people say that, oh, the future is just going to be people generating text with AI, putting it online, people reading it with AI. And yes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Because then you can have researchers doing research, learning a lot of stuff, having the AI create a lot of text explaining everything they learned, and they can put it online so people can read it. And then people can have AI read that and, and kind of simplify it for them. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's yeah. just an easier way of kind of sharing knowledge. Yeah, it's so, just interesting how it's all changing and how we're, we're just getting used to it. And I'm sure based on, say, the, the GCSC rubrics, there will be people out there who are playing around with this. And I'm sure people will. And I would it. love your feedback on it. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think anyway, I'll, let, I'll let you carry on, Eric, because um, we can we can have lots of discussions about this. Oh, yeah, but this is what I love. So if, if anyone is trusting it out, that rubric, send me an email because that would be super interesting. So if you have a CurePod you want to share with other teachers, you just go to my lessons. And then you go share 
and then you get a link and if they follow that link it's added to their uh, page um so now we're at the end of kind of my my kind of plan presentation so i would love to hear if there's any questions anything you want to know um there's of course a lot of more more tools to check out inside Curapod. you can build it from scratch the generators here there, there's coming more generators every day uh for language teachers oh this is actually what i haven't shown you is what do you infer this is a really cool so i just press what you infer oh there's actually two two things i would like to show you here which i haven't showed you yet uh, what you infer it basically creates an image an ai generated image and then you can actually base ask them write in french so that's just a really easy way of practicing describing that's one of my like it's a really easy way of learning language is just describing things but what i haven't showed you is that for all our ai generators you can for let's say for example i'm teaching about the solar system if you write parentheses and then output in Spanish, do magic. And we wait for magic. And there it created uh, the lesson about the solar system, but in Spanish. Um, and this works for all our generators. So you just write parentheses, output in, and then the language you want. It should work in most languages. We haven't added it as a button just because we haven't had the time to actually go through and, and quality check all the languages, but they are really good. So it should work for all our generators, mini project uh mini project about uh world war ii uh, out put in mandarin for example yeah so that's basically here you can create whatever you want in any language so i'll come back here just to see if there's any more questions so we, we had a question. I've just been sent a, a question as a yeah. message around the uh, the possibility of sharing templates. If it, if that is possible, uh, would they be read only, or could a teacher edit someone else's template? No. So we have two versions of sharing templates. One is the one I showed you. Now you create the link, you send them, then they get a copy of it. If you're on a school license, uh, then you uh, then you get a shared workspace. But then you can't edit anyone else's template. You can just make a copy and edit that one. Okay. I mean, are we are we able to talk about prices at all for? for oh this? yeah, of course. That'd be okay. Um, I think that's probably what everyone wants to know as well. Uh, we try to make it as affordable as possible to teachers, basically. So uh, you will see that um, using CurePod, you can use and every all of our tools um, for free, and then there is a limitation of how many uh lessons i can share my screen here again so the limitations is based on kind of how many lessons you can have stored in your library uh, i have thousands of them uh on the free plan you can only store five then you can upgrade to a premium plan it's uh 90 dollars a month uh no nine dollars a month and 90 dollars a year and uh, the code with also in the start here, the promo code Joe's, it gives you 40% off a yearly subscription. And that's a really good deal. <laughs> that's, uh, I think, the best deal we've given out so far. Amazing. Thank you. Well, so, I'm, really, I'm really grateful. And I think I would really encourage everyone to, to jump on that. And so just to clarify, you said $90 for the year. Is, is yeah. that dependent on the number of students? Or how does that work exactly? No. So that's kind of, that's for single teacher premium subscriptions you upgrade yourself yeah uh, and then we have school licenses at two four six thousand dollars a year with depending on the size of the school for all the americans out there as well we also have an, an 
Curipod AI Accelerator program that we just launched. Uh, we hope to take it to Europe as well. Um, I send the link here, uh, but it's for um, uh, schools entering into this also gets 50% of the site licenses. We just uh, so the promo question. code here oh, is for yeah, a yearly yeah. subscription. Yeah, that's what, yeah. So, so I was interrupting. Do you want to just say that again? Yeah, so the, the promo code I shared, it's uh, the Joe promo code is for a yearly subscription. So it's for the, it's of the $90 uh, a year subscription. Um, I see there was another, how many classes are in the free version? Then you can have stored five lessons. So, so is, is, it, is it five presentations? Is that right? That yes, five presentations. So okay. five of these. Yeah, five. So it's, so it's five as a, as a taster of what you can do. And yeah. then if you want to have more than that, then there's the premium version. And is it possible to export uh, at all the... the, the, um, the not at the moment, but we are working with the download as PDF. The reason why we haven't made it yet is that we work so much with interactivity that we want to make sure it's kind of... Um, that is not... Kind of, we, we want to solve the PDF download in a good way. So essentially what teachers could do is they could they could use the five, they could sort of create resources there and then with a bit of tweaking, which wouldn't take too much time. But if they want to save them and store them, then they'd have to invest in the premium plan, wouldn't they? Yeah, and they can do, before they invest in the premium plan, they can delete them and create create more, right? So we, 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 we try to make it as affordable as possible. You can test it out as much as you want. And the only time you need to pay is when, when you have kind of, you want to store more than five lessons. And that's when you use it a lot. Exactly. Amazing. Well, unless anyone's got any more questions, I don't know if there's anything else you could you could show us in relation to. Uh, so I can uh, share some suggestions just to know that great. there will be a lot more of these generators coming out every day. So what we do with these generators are just trying to make it easier for you all to create your lessons. Um, so that's that's kind of one of our heavily focused areas right now. Um, like I can see, Oscar, Oscar's just clarifying with the free version, uh, you have all the functionalities. That's right. You have all the functionalities. Yes. It's just you're limited to five presentations. That's correct. Fantastic. And then Elise is saying, so the limitation is on the save lessons. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And that might, of course, change at some point. But but at the moment, that's that's how it's made. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But so we, you have five lessons, try... have a play, and then if you want to store them or, or use more, then you have to pay, which is fair enough, okay. because obviously Curiopod, as along with lots of other uh, AI, uh, AI tools, people are trying to make a living, and it does cost uh, money to, uh, to use um, ChatGPT 3.5 or ChatGPT 4 every time you send a request or you, you, you run uh, the AI, it, that costs them. And, and especially yeah. kind of also kind of, we focus a lot of data security. So we're GDPR compliant, we're a Norwegian company. Uh, so that's also a, kind of an important thing to note here. So yeah, if you need any data processing agreements or anything like that, then you also reach out to us. Amazing. Okay. So what I would suggest is if people are interested in like the school plan, that they contact um, IRIC and uh, have a chat about what would what would work, what the cost would be, but it's uh, $90 for the year with the, uh, and then you get the discount, the, the, the Joe uh, code discount. Yeah. Um, and that's for a whole year. And then you, that's the premium uh, account. And then you can really uh, go into the weeds and work out exactly how it works. And and then if you want to then use it, um, you can then obviously carry on doing that. But I think that's a very generous offer. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. So if there's not any, are there any last questions there? Let's have, let's have a look in the chat. I'll just see if in my in my Google Doc if I have any other questions. I think oh, yeah. uh, we had a question earlier on about are you sharing some slides? But what I loved about your presentation was basically everything was done live. <laughs> yeah. <That's> so awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you will be able, we have a YouTube channel. That's where I really recommend just going to learn more. It's um, a YouTube channel, Twitter, and just ask out. It's I, I build everything live just because that's the whole idea of it is that it should be really easy to generate slides. Awesome. Awesome. Can we maybe just uh, quickly, if I just share my screen again about yes. my course, if that's all right, just as a as a final plug, um, that would be great. I'll just uh, quickly go here. There we are. So just as a reminder to everyone, um, starting on the 4th of May, uh, resource creation with ChatGPT, a game changer for language teachers um, for webinars uh, as part of the series. I will also be recording each one, which I forgot to mention last time. I'll be recording each one. So if you register 
I will send you the link to uh, each recording, which is going to be 90 minutes long. And uh, if you want a certificate, I've uh, worked out how to use a Chrome extension called Certifyum, which means that I can create a, I have created already a, a Google form for each webinar and the whole series. And you can just put in your email address and your name and you're automatically sent a certificate saying that you've um, attended uh, one or all of the of the webinars. So feel free to uh, sign up. You've got a couple of days to go. And if you uh, are watching this recording and you want to sign up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the recordings available as part of the um, individual uh, options. So in other words, you can't obviously attend live if it's already happened, but you'll be able to watch the recording back. And for the uh, get for uh, pay for four, get some um, one free, um, I will be including recordings as part of that. So for example, if you find out about this next week, then you can watch the recording from the first one, but then you attend the other three live and so on and so forth until the end of uh, May. And then I'm thinking of running it again live in um, in June as well, because there's such a lot of interest about AI at the moment um, and about you know tools like the amazing CuriePod. So it's really, it's been fantastic, Eric, for, to um, to have you presenting and your, your sort of honest reflection and your... Um, uh, your your willingness to discuss different ideas and show ChatGPT in addition to to CuriePod, it's been a real real pleasure. And we're seeing from the chat as well, lots of people are are thanking you and um, and uh, thank you all for being here. And I, I think well, if I want if I want to leave you off with one thing, it's just to explore it, right? Because this this webinar is probably outdated in a month, right? That's <laughs> that's kind of how fast AI is moving. So I would just keep on exploring and, and we will try to kind of do do webinars that are valid throughout time but it's uh, it's about just playing around with it right it's 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 like when the internet came yeah i think that's a really good point um because things are just changing so quickly absolutely um i can see as well oscar in the chat is saying the next webinars are uh, free or do i have to pay for them so the 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 joe Dell webinars the ones i've just uh, talked about um, those are uh, not free because this is how I make a living. This is how I uh, I put bread on the table, as it were. So um, those are uh, are not uh, free. It's um, forty four pounds per webinar. But if you get all four as part of the series, then it works out as um, about one hundred and thirty pounds, which I think is very good value for money, considering the amount of time and effort I put into it. And I'll be delivering them all live, and you get the recording as well. So. Um, yeah, that's how I make a living. So there we are. So if you're interested in coming along, feel free to to, to register. Um, but I will be doing some free ones as well in the future moving forward. But um, those particular ones are not free because um, that's how I make a living. I hope I'm sure everyone understands that. But uh, just to clarify. So uh, again, thank you so much um, to everybody. It's been uh, thank you all. pleasure. Yeah, it's been great. Any any final thoughts, uh, Eric, about uh, in think... general or about CuriePod? I think I'm just super curious to see how everything kind of yeah. moves along. That's and I, I really would recommend webinars like like the ones Joe here make because it's it's about just learning what's out there. And this we're all beginners. Really. I mean, I you know I'd never heard of ChatGPT before November 2022, and I've just been listening to podcasts, watching YouTube clips, reading blog posts, looking at LinkedIn articles, etc., etc., etc. Um, because it's fascinating and it's I think it I could think it is a game changer that's why I put that in the title a game changer for language teaching exactly what you said earlier on about the fact that uh, AI is based on a large language model it's all about it's all about language it's all about gener generative um, AI that's what it's all about so it's not as good on things like facts and what have you I think that will probably change but it's brilliant at for example creating lots and lots of text and um at, at different levels so that's what i would really recommend that people try it for but also in the course i'll be doing i'll be doing some more creative ideas as well and some some ideas around culture and, and combining it with other well-known tools like google earth and font of assessment tools etc as well as curiepod in the uh in the fourth session so there's really lots of things to get your teeth into even if you're already into ai there'll be lots of things for people to learn so Without further ado, then, I'd like to officially thank uh, Eric for your for your time this evening, for everybody coming along. We had, I think, um, about 50 people um, uh, for most of the uh, most of the session, which was absolutely brilliant. And um, I will post the recording up onto my YouTube channel um, either this evening or certainly by tomorrow morning. Um, so you just search for 
at Joe Dale on, on YouTube and you'll find it. And then I'm sure we can email everyone who's registered as well through the Eventbrite, um, the, uh, the link as well. And um, do take advantage of that, that offer. So it's just J-O-E to get 40% off a, an annual premium subscription, a, a fantastic offer. And uh, I'd really encourage you all to do that. So thank you again for your time and for your patience and for your lovely questions and for just attending. Do take care, everyone, and I'll see you at the next one. So I'm going to stop recording right now. And uh, thanks again for coming.